Hi, Hearties. Welcome to Heart to Heart, our chat with our cast and crew with Wind Calls the Heart. This particular Heart to Heart is really special. Um, if you love music, you will enjoy this. But if you love Wind Calls the Heart, TV music and theater music, you are going to be over the moon. We have a lot of guests today, so I'm just going to introduce um, my co-host. I uh, joined with Christy Stutzman. She is the lyricist and composer of the Wind Calls the Heart musical. Christy, welcome. Hi, Hardies. I'm so glad to be here. This is an honor. We also have our fearless leader, John Tinker. Welcome. Dawn, good morning. Thank you. I I'm here mostly as a fan, first of Christie's, but especially of John Serrata. So I'm sitting back and learning all I can about John Serrata. <laughs> Perfect. Well, there's a lot of things that you guys collaborate with. So I think we're going to kind of dive into that as well. So thank you for uh, helping us to kind of uh, understand what's going on um, behind the scenes. Um, right. so, so the other uh, special guest, Wind Calls the Heart composer, John Serrata. Welcome. And we love you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> And thank you. And and I, I'm I'm I guess I'm here to learn something about myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. We're I'm okay with that. Um, I was really curious about your background. So how did you kind of go through your career and then found when calls the heart? Well, um, I when I when I when I tell this long and tortured tale, <laughs> often. Um, I often refer to having angels kind of pointing me in different directions. I, I started my career actually thinking I was going to be an academic, thinking I might be a lawyer. Ooh, oh. <laughs> still frightening. <laughs> that, that still sends shivers down my spine. But uh, I, I, I got involved in music. I was a bass player for the early part of my career. I started having opinions about <laughs> what I was playing and you know there's, there's there's only one thing to do is put up or or shut up so I started writing starting arranging and just discovered that you know the people who know who have you in the bass player box you know they're you know I, I, I can bug them as much as I want to 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 have me write but the best thing I ever did was get involved with a theater group and they never knew I played the bass I was, you know, wow. still am a sort of a very um, partially functional keyboardist. And, but, you know, they didn't know any better. So they thought I played the piano. And, um, and that's how I got started. But that was happenstance. And kind of the same thing happened with, um, you know, screen, screen composing. It's just a slow process of migrating from one medium to the other, but, you know, based on kind of, dumb luck and serendipity and, and, and an interest in it and and kind of a, a willingness to to um <clears throat> i guess um, take a lot of abuse really <laughs> <laughs> i mean this is television after all yeah. uh, i am feeling i'm i'm very very grateful for for the the luck the luck that i've had but I've, i i never i guess the short story is I never at any point sort of said, okay, this is what I want to do. Yeah. I want to write music for television. I'm going to write it for a certain kind of show. And, you know, I want to work with a certain kind of people. That sort of never happened. It just kind of, it was quite organic. Wow. Thank you for that. So I have my phone and I have a ringtone that is infamous or famous. No, I'm just one of thousands and thousands of hearties that have the theme song of wind calls the heart for a ringtone and so what do you think about that it doesn't get any better mm. it really doesn't i mean you know starting with the fact that i get to write music for a living that already puts me among you know the most fortunate humans um i get to work with some of the nicest smartest people on the planet you know bonus yeah and, and then uh, I get, you know, that feedback loop, you know, from people actually caring and listening to the music. I mean, it just, it really doesn't get any better than that. It, it, it is super important. And, and 
you know, it's 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 the thing that might be missing from a street screen composer's life. You know, mm. a, a solitary delivery um, without immediate audience yeah. feedback. Yeah. Well, so. I think we loaded that. Um, I think Brian shared that ringtone, and that was like season two like after it was renewed for season two. So yeah, and especially what you did with the um, CD. I have it on iTunes and this is my dad's favorite when we drive to his doctor's appointments and things like that. That's what he loves. So then he is a music teacher. Oh Um, my goodness. Tired and things like that. So Oh wow. Well, tell your dad thank you. And he has impeccable taste in music. (laughs) Well, you know, Christy, he also has the CD and that was in his bedroom. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So we love what calls the heart in this house. <laughs> so, awesome. so we have Hardy's um, that were asking about um, what kinds of things do you have to do in this world? So um, I have a question from uh, Heather Hood from Minneapolis. And she says, as a fellow musician, she would love to hear uh, about the process of scoring an episode and what does it start and how does it evolve? Okay, well, I'll, I'll start it and, and then invite John to jump in. Um, first, I'll, I'll say, you know, it, everything starts with the script. Everything starts with the story. Is that what you wanted me to say, John? It's okay. close enough. So we're we're all we're all in service of the story, you know. Let let let's face it. So, a lot a lot has happened before I come in contact with with you know this this great team, and I'm I, the generally speaking the episode is locked already. So, countless decisions have been made, countless arguments have been had. You know, John has had to massage this this um, you know amorphous mass into a show and so by the time it gets to me it's it's pretty clear what the show's about so i will usually try and screen it and then i'll have um i'll have questions you know or or i'll have generally moments of terror where <laughs> i have you know, have no idea you know how to approach a you know a, a particular scene and and that's you know that's where john comes in to make everything right you know we 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 go through the show together scene by scene oh okay that's interesting you know either one of us can stop the tape at any time at that point you know obviously john knows it really well but i'll usually be stopping and saying okay so what's here what's important here or what can i do to serve the story from a scientific point of view, if I may, <laughs> yeah, uh, mu- music music is a different doorway. The science shows us that music is activating and interacting with it, an entirely different part of the brain. I think of it as a different, a completely different doorway into the story. I'm just trying to find in every you know as as it progresses because the show isn't about music. It's not about what I want to do. The show's about the story is about the story. Mm-hmm. You know, I swear to tell the story, the true story, and nothing but the story. <laughs> um, and uh, you know that that's that's where John has to, um, you know, calm me down, direct me to what's important in a scene because you know, as Christy will will tell you. You're, you're, as, as you're writing music, music, you're just confronted with a thousand choices. Mm. Yeah, and yes. you just, you just have to, you have to make those choices uh, by whatever means you can, and that's, and that's, that's, and John and I interacting during our screening of the episode. That's, that's what helps me make my choices. Interesting. So it, it sounds like the. The everything is filmed. You have the 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 la, or you know the last edit, and then you are kind of enhancing what you have on screen, and you have this um, kind of collaboration with John. So we're talking about how it, it evolves in one 
episode. Um, so that is interesting. John Tinker, what do you think about the evolution for one episode? Well, first of all, John's being far too kind. He is hugely important to the process. You know, usually we, we wind up delivering him an episode and, and tell him to fix it. And <laughs> it's not just um, coming alongside us. It's, it's often clarification. And that goes to what I've said here a couple of times. I've learned a little bit from John Serrata about storytelling because what he has to do is really, especially in the event that we've been um, hacks and we haven't been able to make clear what this scene is about, he has to come in and really help it. And I'm not joking. There are more, more often than not, he really does have to come and undergird a scene with music that isn't so obvious that it hits you over the head but mm. it subtly reinforces what the intent of the scene is. Mm. And, and I gotta tell you, you know, to do it once is something, to do it uh, uh, every week for, for 12 episodes or 24, whatever kind of show you're working on to be a, uh, but, but to do it for nine years and not to be repetitive and to continue to come up with, with interesting takes. And uh, I just, I really am in awe of, He's, he is, probably my most favorite person with whom I've worked when it comes to composition and music. And uh, like I said, I've learned from him and uh, so appreciative of how he's helped the show. And I find John's at his best often when he has more fun than he thinks he's allowed to have. <laughs> there have been a number of times this season where he's surprised me and I'm sure the audience with, with, with different music styles just kind of as a wink to the audience. And, and they're just terrifically fun. I really can't say enough about him, but it's a Herculean task week in and week out with the number of scenes that come in a show with the amount of music that needs to be written. And, and again, to do it for nine seasons and hopefully he'll get the opportunity. They'll let him out of the rubber room to, <laughs> to, to have the opportunity to do it again for a 10th and beyond. He's yes. really talented, really talented. Yeah, there's so many scenes, um, two or, I think two or three scenes that um, with the costumes with um, Rosemary and Lee and, you know, she did the Cleopatra and there's something like the chimes or something like that. I don't know what you did, but I was like, perfect. Every time I hear it, it is so great. And it just enhanced the the watching of, of the show. So, and we recognize it, we, you know, it's always there and we are so appreciative what you do. Well, first of all, uh, I'm not gonna speak for myself anymore. John Tinker will do all the <laughs> <laughs> Any, Anything you want to know about me, it'll be John Tinker. Um, <laughs> and We're not his rep. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, I mean, he, John said the exactly the right word. Those those situations where the music is meant to be uh, a wink at the audience. I mean, often what we're hoping to do is is not have the music on a very conscious level because there's too much going on. We want the music there into that second doorway, um, but not commanding all your attention because once again it's it's about the story but there are those little fun moments where we can wink at the audience and say okay so Cleopatra what's what's her you know what's her music um you know what's what's pirate music what's yeah you know um I think you know <laughs> what's goose you know where's Gustav's inner soul <laughs> oh Oh, I love ghost. I mean, the whole accordion. Um, just love it. Love it. Uh, well, there's, there's. If I, if I may, I don't know. There, there's a, an ep, There's a scene at the. I, I think it might be one of my favorite scenes, and it's just a personal kind of. It makes me smile. There's a scene near the end, very end of of episode seven. This last year and and it's been broadcast so i can talk about it i think yeah. Yeah. um and um they're at they're around they're at night there there's candles lit there's a there's a campfire um uh lucas and elizabeth have just been sort of 
the jousting a little bit about you know spring weddings or 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 fall weddings and and then just at the end of their sentence you hear this feathering in of the accordion and then we cut to Gustav with his head sort of cocked and he joined in the conversation it's it's just I love it. it. It's funny and <laughs> and and uh, I, I I just I just I really love the way it worked out and 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 you know uh, the engineer who does mixing for for the music Paul Chateau he just he just feathered it and mixed it in so it you know it could be live it could be playing but there's also score going so Gustav all of a sudden has become part of the studio orchestra <laughs> or not you know, yeah. It, yeah. It's just super fun. Okay. Uh, by uh, the way, thank you for mentioning Paul. He is he's integral to the process too. And and he and John have a terrific working relationship. And I've been allowed to kind of interlope into that. But uh, he's very important too. He has good opinions and great instincts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's Absolutely. great. I, I do have a question about um, the, the theme song that you, we've had for so long, you know, what was the kind of genesis of what you were thinking when you were kind of composing that title song that we love on our, our phone and even in the CD? What was your thought process as you were just creating it for the show before it was even aired? Yeah, <laughs> there's a process? <laughs> creativity <laughs> what? Um, I, I, what, what were you thinking that, well that I just you know I it's it's not really once again every, everything we say today is is sort of words about music which is as yeah. someone either Frank Zappa or or, or, <laughs> or Mozart said uh, you know talking about music is like dancing about architecture yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so uh, so it's 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 hard it's it's not a it's it's not a experience i just you know at the beginning of a series everybody's trying to land somewhere that's comfortable every everybody is trying to figure out what to what to do and 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 you know my that decision making there was sort of you know a lot of angst around how big how small how mm -hmm. intimate how, you know, is, is it a sweeping theme about, you know, is it a theme about the overall story? Is it about the characters? You know, where, how, what do we want the audience to, or, or how, how, how best to engage the audience for what's coming after? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think the only, the only um, sort of, um, specifics that I was told, and this was in conversation with the network, mm -hmm. it, it had to do with, because my question was, well, it's a period piece. Um, is that important? Um, is it, you know, it's rural? Is that important? Um, and they just, you know, and, and, and I had to use the word, uh, well, how rootsy is it supposed, can it be or should mm. it be? And mm -hmm their response was not. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah, I mean, I've noticed too, John. I mean, I don't remember exactly when that, when this um, intro um, theme music, you know, that, that in introduces the whole uh, TV show, that theme um, was composed. Was it at the beginning of the, the first season or was it later? Because I thought there was like, all of a sudden there was, seemed to be a new theme uh, that was presented. Well, there was there there the first I I didn't start working on the show until episode five. Okay. So, so there was a different um, there was a different music team at that point, and um, so I think I th there was a different theme for the first four shows, and I'm I'm you know my memory is is a little sketchy on on when it was changed but it was just it, it was a process of people finding their way so by episode yeah. five yeah. um you know they had a you know sometimes it's it's a question of uh, uh, discovering what you don't want right yeah yeah you well know? i remember i remember vividly noticing a change and yeah. um thinking yeah. it was iconic and thinking wow this reminds me of 
you know, like an Anne Dudley opening to Poldark, you know, or to the opening to Downton Abbey. It was just, it was that iconic. And um, I just loved the feeling of it. I, I felt like it expressed um, the growing uh, characters in the story, the, the growing field of characters that we've been, you know, getting to meet along the way and um, the town growing. I mean, it, I just, it just felt like it really fit. And um, I just remember telling my husband, I'm like, oh, oh, I like that. That's that. I like that a lot. Oh, well. <laughs> so I just thought it was perfect. It was beautiful. Yeah, that was, that's true. It was season two, um, the first one. Yeah. 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 Well, thank, thank you. I mean, I'll, I'll, you know, I think I can, I think everybody's gone now, maybe. <laughs> because the only <laughs> one of the one of the other than not rootsy the other network note that that um that i got and, and things often often happen this way and uh i hope i'm yeah well it's out of school and you know it, this is just between us right <laughs> absolutely right oh, for sure yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just okay. Okay. so <laughs> So um, there, there was a, a live, you know, a live meeting, uh, you know, a number of people, 10 people around a conference table and, um, you know, uh, network representation and, and producer representation and music representation, which was me. And, um, you know, some, someone from the network said, um, well, listen, we, we don't want it. We're not going to tell you how to write the music. But we love Downton Abbey. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, there's a lot of transition. I mean, they talk about the the hats for season one, and then um, mm -hmm. yeah, they were kind of leaning into that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we so let me just it. interject just something okay. here. John John said something about a lot of this is about what what you don't want or what isn't correct, and. And that is often the case. You'll, you'll, you know, when John and I get together and watch the show, again, he, what he needs best is clarification. If there isn't already a, a, a clear idea what the scene is about, he needs that. So we discuss every scene, whether we think it needs music or not, and if so, what kind. And and then he goes away, and and maybe at the in season eight, the first couple, maybe. Maybe I had a couple of notes, but far more often than not, 98, 99% of the time, John goes away and he comes back with, oh yeah, that's, he's got it. It's not as though, and I've worked with a lot of people. You see, no, 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 that's too, there's too much music. There's too little music, Yeah. you know, and, mm -hmm. and he, he just knows the show so well mm -hmm. and, and he's talented as a musician to boot. So somehow he's able from the, from the ether to put something together that that is way more often than not well that that collaboration between the two of you i think it really shows in this in the show i mean there's and I, those this was one of my questions too that uh i wanted to ask you is that there's so much sync music out there you know where people just pick something that's already pre-written and fit it to things and it really felt to me like this show was customized so i'm thrilled to hear that that is the case. I mean, that's that's why it is so. It feels like it's through compose because you've you've discussed it and you've customized it to uh, the the show itself and the episode itself. So um, I think it comes through. I think it makes the, a huge difference um, in the presentation of of each character and the the, the storyline and and everything. It allows us to keep following it and to understand that that is just so hand in glove. Um, that's amazing. Uh, it really is. I, I, I know I have fun working with John and I think it is productive, but Christy, you know that, at least in my opinion, nothing worse than speaking with someone about music who has no vocabulary at all and, and, and tries to, you know, explain what what this is about and can you put here that do do that stuff with your notes right. or more bass or <laughs> and, and and so now he's got to winnow through that and he's got to decipher that so i do have fun working with john yeah and uh it's a collaboration i hope that continues for some time yeah Me well, too. To, to, to the you know to the point of of you know cu custom music uh, maybe I'll put that on my website. <laughs> Custom music <laughs> with a K. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, but but I mean the the thing and 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 the beautiful thing for me about something that's lasted this long is is it's 
you know, the, I mean, the closest analog is, is like a symphony where there are motifs, there are themes, there are, there are things that recognize that are threaded through and woven right. into the fabric of the piece. And that's what, you know, I, I mean, no way comparing myself to people who write symphonies, but I do think of the process in that sense that, you know, we, we have themes that thread yeah. themselves through and you know, I'm I'm off, I'm kind of pulling stuff from here and there, pulling a thread from 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 this sort of um, from from this emotional setting to the next emotional setting. Mm -hmm. and, but but once again, it's it's all in service of the story. Right. It's not. Right. It's it's not a. I mean, it, 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 I mean, except for the parts where we're winking at the audience. I mean, maybe maybe we say, well. Yeah, but John and Christy, you both know it's not that. It, that is not nearly so simple as you just explained. <laughs> especially especially during an episodic show where you're going scene to scene and you have sometimes very different emotions. Again, yeah. Yeah. and I'm not paying you any any tuition here, so I'm, I took all of this. <laughs> gratis it's another thing you know that john reminded me in working with him you know going from scene to scene is a very important so what's your transition what's the mood of this scene what's the mood of this scene and not only the action and the words but importantly where would the music go and how would that work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, or not sometimes or the not. most effective way to do to do it is stop playing music mm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. don't have music here mm -hmm. um the, no where to put those windows yeah exactly mm -hmm. because you know uh, music all the way through is going to you know um sort of neutralize its effect mm -hmm. it's going to make people numb mm -hmm. um and i think that's what john tinker gets is is that not having music for a while makes any incoming music more important mm -hmm. yeah and, and thus, and thus, you have to, you know, you have to, you have to be careful. I mean, but I, I just, I just think that there's, I mean, we, the one thing that we didn't talk about in terms, ju just to backtrack a little bit about some of the music, the music where somebody on screen plays. Um, that's that's a discussion that John and I have long before they even shoot it, mm -hmm. because oh, okay. typically I forget to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> That's only happened once. He's very forgiving, and John. I mean, <laughs> John Strait is very forgiving. <laughs> well, I've, I'm the beneficiary of, of of that notion more often than not. But I mean, that's also a fun part of our collaboration. Yeah. Is you know, um, John John will will have a character singing um, out out of you know in the script, and. And all of a sudden, you know, all the papers go up in the air and it's like, what? Well, we better <laughs> we better figure this out. What because, key are we in? What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, what you know, they you know, somebody's gotta so so there's there's a whole other process for that yeah. kind of stuff. There's there's a whole, you know, we have to decide, you know, um if if it's a if it's a if it's an existing tune, then we have to we have to find a find a key. It's mm -hmm. comfy for the performer. We have to give the performer a reference in an, what's called an earwig, mm -hmm. so, that, so that they can sing um, to in key mm -hmm. and and to to some kind of format that we've or some kind of tempo, some kind of shape, and so that you know they're they're going to take they're going to shoot it. Um, you know, a lot of people think, well, just just sing the song. It's an easy song. Everybody knows it. And, you know, what's the problem? Um, well, there's, there's a few hundred problems. There's a few hundred places that could go terribly wrong. Um, so, you know, they're going to shoot it a number of times, you know, and if it's not, if it's not shot or, or sorry, if they're not, if the performance isn't um, pretty much equal, uh, certainly in tempo each time, the editor can't can't choose anymore. Yeah, you know, he's yeah. stuck. Um, mm -hmm. So so that's you know that that's a fun and we've we've had some fun and there there was a scene with uh, um, you know Angela playing the piano with Landis and then they start interacting and I mean 
credit credit to John and Neil Fearnley who who directed that because you know the scene you know when you re when a composer reads that that's that in a script and um it's just terrifying it's yeah. it's just you know <laughs> how are they, you know they, everybody's in a hurry how are they going to make this work you know they've they've got to get hand doubles to, mm -hmm. to do the piano work um and uh, so I, I was very proud of how that worked out. I thought it worked out really well. But that's, yeah. you know, that's 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 a, you know, there's a whole other department that does that. You know, in shows like Glee, there's a there's you know 50 people who work on just the performances. Right. Well, that I think that leads into a, the next question. Um, if you don't mind, uh, there's a question from Joy Hit Bradley of Vancouver, Washington, and she is asking about. Um, a musical episode where like, I don't know, let me just read it to you. She says, um, uh, would there be a musical episode or a musical show performed in an episode of the TV show? Um, could a Hope Valley musical ever be in the card? So um, I know there would be a lot of work behind the scenes to make that possible and have to be like a whole production on its own. But um, is that something, I know the cast is extremely talented. I mean, you have so many music musicians uh, and singers and performers in the cast. Um, so would that be in the realm of possibility? Well, I'm going to defer to John John Tinker because nothing is out of the realm of possibility. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, totally right. Uh, it's, you know. it's been discussed so much. I won't say ad nauseum because I, I think it's a great discussion to have. I just wish, I hope someday, it can be done. Um, it's 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 an idea that preceded me, and and uh, and we John and I discussed it. But um, it, so far, at least, that, that hasn't happened. But I, I think it's a natural thing. Um, it is a talented cast, very talented. But then again, when it comes down to singing and all kinds of things, you bump up against limitations. Um, one thing that John has had going for him and the show has is Erin Krako has a beautiful voice. Mm, she yeah. is uh, tremendously talented when it comes to that. Yeah. Um, and as far as the other guys, uh, you know, and gals, I don't know, I don't know the extent of the, you know, the, the limitations. I don't know where those are. So that's another yeah. thing that would have to be taken into account. But I, I hope it happens. I think it would be fun. Yeah. I, did, yeah. I did I did a similar thing. And I certainly wasn't the first to do it on a show called Chicago Hope. Uh, um, Don Prestrich and Nicole Yorkin wrote the episode where Aaron Shutt, a doctor, has to undergo an operation himself. And in this dream world, he he has there are many musical numbers, but mm -hmm. I think it'd be great. Well, I think you Christy, know, I nominate you. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> oh boy. Um, you know, but I, I think every time you've done it, every time someone has uh sung, you know, on screen and all the work that goes into making that happen, it has been so worth it. And um, we really enjoy those moments, whether it's you know, Rosie or, you know, Aaron singing or whatever. It's just, it's always a welcome thing and it's a natural part of life. So I love the fact that you've interwoven them, in, interwoven, you know, era appropriate songs, but into the script here and there, it's just, just added some life and, and beauty to it. And I know it takes a lot of work. I can't imagine how much work it takes, but I would just um, applaud you on, on all the efforts there. If, if, if I could have, uh, I would have, Music was so important at that time. It was still one of the main forms mm -hmm. of recreation. Right. Um, and, and I would have had more. I just, and, and, and but John said, stop pushing me, stop driving me. <laughs> Taskmaster. Um, I, I just, may I, may I comment on, on, um, you know, the, the singing and, and particularly I want to shout out to Aaron because um, there is a, a, there is a singular event in in you know twenty years of television that happened on When Calls the Heart um, in the episode where you know in season five, if I'm not mistaken, where she sings Danny Boy, mm -hmm. um, oh, and yes, yes, and, yes. And part of the reason why that has such emotional impact is you actually are here hearing her singing live. That wow. never happens. You won't have heard it in a movie. You won't have heard it on television. Mm. I, 
anywhere as far as I'm that I'm aware of. But the sound man and Aaron, the sound man, you know, shout out to whoever that was. And Aaron, Aaron's performance was terrific, but the sound man had to be there to capture it. That's, right. you know, for people who don't know how that works, when they see someone singing on television or in a movie, they're not seeing someone singing on television in a movie. They're singing someone who sang afterwards mm -hmm. or before someone who's, who's, who's singing to or pantomiming to something in their ear right. that they then come afterwards and sing to. Mm -hmm. um so so you know that, that that's just a moment for me that stands out and it speaks to the care that a the crew took on that day and mm -hmm. to what Aaron can bring to a scene yeah mm -hmm. uh, just one uh, to add a, a a coda hey there's a musical term to that you know <laughs> frequent, not frequently but there will be complaints the music's too loud it's too loud I know it's not about the music not being good it's about it not it's overriding dialogue. Unfortunately for folks, um, the, the technology uh, of the picture far precedes um, the, the technology of sound. So you have some folks listening to it on big speakers, some folks listening to it on a four inch speaker. So it's hard to modulate wow. that. So we apologize to folks who can't hear the dialogue, but we do our best when we're on the mixing stage and we have great mixers and, and folks handling that to do to make it so you can hear and enjoy everything mm -hmm. that's not just john turning up his music because he's so enamored of it <laughs> louder louder <laughs> i want to be louder <laughs> you know, the, the i mean that is the quintessential kind of balance that you're kind of, you're striking and 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 it is true some one of the sort of a, a singular, let's say, characteristic of One Calls the Heart is there is a lot of dialogue in the show and there mm -hmm. is a lot of music. Yeah. Uh, thus, there is a lot of music with the dialogue. That's, that's not true of a, a lot of shows. And um, in this case, I think that's, that's I think I've honed my, my skill at wrapping wrapping stuff around dialogue and responding to dialogue. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's one of the things I'm very proud of in the music to When Calls the Heart. I mean, I would say at least 50, no, no, more, 60, maybe even 70% of the music is not done with a click track. Um, and huh. so that means that the, there's, a, I don't know if that means anything to to, to anybody, but yeah. uh, but that that means that the the music is not metronomic. It is yeah. not uh, regimented. It's it's not you know it's not like a march. Mm -hmm. um, that means the tempo stretches and weaves, and and that allows the music to you know intertwine itself with dialogue, rather than having music with its own rhythm. And dialogue with its rhythm. Yeah. I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to work with the rhythm of the dialogue. I love and that. I think. I think that that's. Hopefully, that's that's why they just don't have to turn it so far down. Um, yeah. Well, I think it ebbs and flows with the emotions really well, and and um, that's something I've noticed too. With um, I've noticed that too, as far as like the dialogue and the music aren't really in sync sometimes with some other shows, you know? And this one, it's almost like just through composed. Uh, that's the only word I can come up with it um, for, for it. But um, yeah, it's just beautifully done, beautifully done. Oh, sure, that's Chris, you take purpose. the easy way out. No dialogue, you, you just write dash off a couple of songs where they sing the narrative. That's right. <laughs> well, there, there, are, there are, you know, there's always a, yeah. a, a the heart. There's those moments where, you know, some sometimes where there is no uh, dialogue for a while and it's just oh here we go let's, <laughs> let's, let's do this now fun part I love uh, it I love it we had a couple other questions I think from Hardee's right I think this is really good um, Brenda Lavender Turner from Texas wants to know among all the seasons and I know it's doing just nine seasons so just come bear with me but all the seasons and all the episodes what scene has proven the most challenging 
for you to score. And, and this is for both of you because you're working together on this, but um, you know, where is it the, you know, the, the loss, you know, or was it, um, you know, tension between them and what would be uh, one of the most challenging types, I guess, types of scores or an episode that you would have to score? Um, well, I, I think you want to, I think of those, you know, challenges, you know, I, I put them in different baskets. I mean, the stuff that's emotionally difficult, I mean, uh, you know, let's not forget, I'm, I'm an audience member. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of audience number one or two or three or, or, or whatever. Um, so if I'm not emotionally engaged with the story, I can't do my job. Mm. So if, if there's a hard scene emotionally, it's hard for me. Yeah. But, you know, the music isn't hard. The music, the music is, is, you know, it's, it, it's not a question often about what the music should be. Uh, you know, I, I don't have, I'm not, I'm not confused about it, but still, you know, uh, when, you know, the scene when Aaron hears that Jack's, you know, that Jack's not coming back. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that gives me a lump in my throat just talking about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so that's hard. Um, but again, that's, you know, that's what I pay for when I go to see a movie. I want to go on that journey. I want to feel, I want to have, be on that roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. So, so that's fun. Um, so, so that's hard in one way. I think the, 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 the challenges are, as we talked about before, when, when, maybe there's a bunch of choices and, 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 you know, I, I, I guess the irony is, is if there's a bunch of great choices, it's really hard. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. A choice. And, and I think, you know, there's, you know, playing the triangle, um, you know, the, the Elizabeth Lucas, Nathan, um, I found that very challenging. Mm, uh, yeah. Simply because, you you can't you can't tip your hat to you know it, it, one I mean, or the other. I don't, I don't know I don't know how to explain it, but there was <laughs> a balance there, and we were you know um, misdirecting the. Right, you don't want the music to give the wrong clue about yeah, exactly. this one or that one. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so um, so I I found that pretty challenging. Um, I think when there's and the other thing, but I I, I don't. I'll find there's there's the challenge that I feel before I talk to John Tinker. So there's you know <laughs> BJT and then AJT. So BJT, you know, I'm I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Confused and frightened. AJT. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. Or oh, okay. So right on. The guide speaks into it, right? <laughs> Okay. Well, you're, I find those an answers interesting. I would think those would be easier. The uh, a scene that pops into my mind that I thought was difficult on many levels, and maybe not for you, John. But you remember when Aaron was was confronting Nathan about uh, the the Fort Clay stuff, and the band was playing in the background, and they were celebrating. There were so wow. many different conflicting emotions going on with with Bill leaving and and this and that, and and you said, "What the heck is this scene about?" rightly so yeah where do i land you said you know who yeah right? yeah well did you have to bring that up no <laughs> you did a great job cut it out you did a great job <laughs> um no no it was it, it but it does it does require me me to get clarification and and sometimes you know i'm you know, John, John, John has to tell me what this is about, but other times it, we sort of come to something together and it wasn't what either one of us would have said off the top of our heads. That, that's fun. That is yeah. fun. That's, which is kind of fun. But, but once, you know, even in a scene where there's a band playing and there's this and that, I mean, in the end, once you have a clear idea of what you're doing, it's like plumbing. You know, mm -hmm. I got to connect this pipe here and this pipe here and then, and then we're good. Yeah. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I have to excuse John Serrata and and just say that I I love the fact that when our brass band plays at some little function, they always play the same tune, and it's not <laughs> that John's gotten lazy. We just love the idea that they only know one sort of. I band. know one song. <laughs> 
That's right. That's great. Oh, well, what do you text? Uh, but they, and they rehearse it a lot. Yeah. And they're very. That's right. They're very, they very still good. Don't get it right. Uh, perfection. Oh, that's great. Well, it, so okay so here's my question for you john uh well for both of you like when you when you're thinking let's say um we have a scene with tragedy um are there certain instrumentations that you kind of tend to uh you know lean toward using in those situations um strings oboe versus you know something else or i mean when you see a scene let's say well here's another question too when you're looking at it do you look at it on the script first and start hearing okay yeah this will work or do you wait until you see it filmed uh, to kind of get the feeling of the type of instrumentation you want to do? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't start writing when I read the script. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm always waiting to see how it's performed. And that, I think what what sort of informs the, the choice, I mean, we have a, a fairly well-established palette to start mm -hmm. with. It's, it's not yeah. like, even though John Tinker has been pushing for the bagpipes forever. Oh. Like, I'm, always, I'm always saying, look, John, no, <laughs> not this show, please. <laughs> <Back off. laughs> um, Is there a, like a family history connection with bagpipes or something or just? No, no, I just. He just likes right, them? It's, it's, a, it's a random thing that came oh. out. So I apologize. <laughs> okay. Um, um, but I, I think the decisions in those sorts of scenes are um, internal, external. You know how uh, you know are we are we going inside mm -hmm. Elizabeth's you know persona? Are we are are we trying to uh, illuminate something you know deep inside, or are we are we trying to? paint the broad strokes for the audience. And sometimes we'll do both. Sometimes we'll try, we'll paint broad strokes and then it's very intimate and then it's not, it, it kind of, mm -hmm. I, I don't have a, a rule or a formula. Um, I've tried, I've looked for, all over for those. I've tried to buy them, but it's not available. <laughs> it's, it just happens, it just it happens. Just happens, yeah. yeah. I don't think of, I rarely think of instrumentation. If I'm thinking anything, it's tone tempo, which is why, since I'm not thinking about that stuff and I only make his job harder. When when the show comes back and we watch it together, I just, it's it's really fun. Cause I'm, it's like seeing the show for the first time. Oh, wow. It's That's really cool. fun to, to have it come back with music. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, so I think that leads to another question um, that we were going to ask you, but I don't know if it's me or uh, Don should read it or no, I, um, the the debate, the debate question about the theme. Yeah, you could do that. That's fine. Oh. Okay, so there's a debate going on, um, and so we're wanting clarification on this. Um, and I have is an there opinion or too. <laughs> what is it? I have an opinion too. So go ahead. <laughs> So is there or is there not theme music for Jack and Elizabeth? And is there a theme for Lucas and Elizabeth? Um, absolutely not. And sort of. Okay. So, and I'm just going to interject right now. As a watcher, as a hearty, the, the theme that um, season one, uh, episode 12, when they kiss. And that's the same um, theme that is in the wedding. So it's not really, I don't think that you probably consciously uh, pinned it as a, a theme for the couple, but that, you know, tells us for a, a hearty, that's the theme for mm -hmm. Jack and Elizabeth. So that's the reason why we are always kind of like, why are you doing the theme for Jack and Elizabeth for someone else? And so that was the discussion. So, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, that was the sort of part of my answer. Um, it's, it's, I'm, I'm never thinking this is Jack and Elizabeth's theme, but I am thinking thematically to the situation. Mm. You know, this is the love theme. And, and, and it is true that I, you know, the, the Jack and Elizabeth love theme just became really ingrained. Mm -hmm. But it was never in my mind, you know, their love theme 
or yeah yeah it, it was always about love yeah mm. and it, it and the same happens I mean, with a with a few exceptions, you know, with a few exceptions, like you know, for Jack, I would often, you know, if there's something referencing Jack, I'll just use this lonely military trumpet. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. that, that's a cliche, but it's it's effective, and it 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 has that emotional baggage mm -hmm. that 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 brings something to the scene. So. So I, I mean, I, I think I forgive everybody who thinks that I have a theme for all the characters. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's great. It's, it's, it's um, yeah, uh, and, and I am trying to relate one scene to another and one theme to yeah. another. I am trying to pull the, you know, use the power of this, this of these themes because you know, they, they gain power with repetition. That's what thematic development is. Exactly, for so, five, five years. Yeah. If, if you think, if you know, you're, you're not hearing something different all the time, but what I'm trying to do is take these motifs, pull them into, you know, where the narrative is at in this place and whether, and, and generally speaking, it, it'll be recognizable, but it won't be the same. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's well, kind of the heartstrings throughout. Um, that is magical, and and yet as a watcher, we really kind of connect with that couple. And because the tragedy in you know uh, season five, and especially the um, the last episode, and I really want to say congratulations for that particular episode. Mm -hmm. That is an emotional roller coaster. And today I still, if I, if I have a, if I want a great cry, I go episode, <laughs> the, the finale on uh, uh, episode, episode um, season five, because the music when she is uh, on hit the horse mm -hmm. and just kind of, kind of lifting herself out of the, the doldrums of, of, of sadness. I was like, that is so powerful. And I think that's the reason why, and, and it's in the CD too. So if, if people, Hardys, if you not, if not um, purchase it, you need to do it. Um, yeah, so it's just, even when I'm driving, I have that emotion. I knew what that theme was. So um, it's just so, so great. There's so many yeah. things that, you know, it's on iconic for When mm -hmm. Calls the Heart itself. John, I still think if you use the penny whistle in that theme, it might have been even better. Yeah, I don't disagree. And, you know, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, you mean the slide whistle. Yeah, uh, that, we call them penny whistles, but yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah, full stop. No. <laughs> uh, well, I had a personal question. I'm just kind of curious from for this is for John Serrato, but um, what who are your if you could name some of your favorite composers or what in, has inspired your writing over the years? Well, I I I mean, you know, there's there's lots of yeah, lot, I mean, you know, um, Thomas Newman, Hans Zimmer. Mm -hmm. All, all the names you'd recognize. And I think, um, you know, even John, John, I mean, I mean, not even John Williams, but John Williams has written some music that will tear your heart out. The, yeah. the score to Schindler's List is, mm -hmm. you know, from someone who you're used to hearing um, incredible bombast and, big, and orchestration, yeah. mm -hmm. something so tender, so emotional, it's just astonishing. So, right. I'm I am astonished by and and inspired by specific scores, but there are people like, well, I guess you know if if I had to single somebody out, it it'd be Thomas Newman because of his directness and and the simplicity, yeah, of of his 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 just approach. It's 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 so accessible, mm -hmm. and it's 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 not it's not I mean, it's technically difficult, but it's not. Um, it's not complicated. It's exactly. emotional. It's direct. 
and that's that's my inspiration. That's the way mm -hmm. I want to write music. Mm -hmm. Awesome, and awesome. I, that's I, great. I mean, this, I mean this sincerely. Folks can be inspired by folks, um, and I would never accuse John because if I had the opportunity, I would of of aping someone. Um, I had the opportunity to to approach James Newton Howard, and I wanted James to rip himself off with a theme to uh, Princess uh, to Prince of Tides. Mm. And, and he said, well, just, I can't do it. I don't have time, but let someone else do it. And, and we did, and they did a good job. But my point is this, if you don't, if as a person, you don't have that heart and soul the way John Serrata does, it's, it's not going to have heart and soul. It's right. going to sound like a pale imitation of someone who's inspired you or someone who you're trying to imitate. And, and again, this is a man of, of, of great emotional um, access when it mm. comes to what he writes. Mm. And, uh, yeah. just, uh, wow. Yeah. It comes through. Yeah. Really? <laughs> This is recorded, so you have it documented. Well, remind like me who we're talking about again. I know, Don, and his head doesn't get like. I mean, he really doesn't. He's just mm -hmm. great. It's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I, I tease you too much and don't laud you enough. Mm -hmm. I've been really excited about this interview to talk to you guys and um, just kind of pick your brains about how you do things. And I've learned a lot uh, already of um, your process and things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, my question would be as far as your collaboration goes, uh, as far as writer, like, you know, the script and then also the music. Um, have there been situations where um, there was a not really disagreement, but just kind of a different approach on something and you had to work through that. And if so, did, you know, did someone else weigh in or how did you uh, work through that? Or maybe you never happened, it's never happened. <laughs> I've never had a disagreement with John. Um, and, and there have been times when, when we don't see eye to eye in terms of what the emotion might be or should be, but yeah. I've never been disappointed in either the process and especially what he comes up with. Mm -hmm. So probably because he knows the show so well and he knows the yeah. character so well. And, and who he is. Express that, yeah. And um, you know, one thing that I've admired too, and you mentioned simplicity, John um, Serrata, um, I, that's one thing that um, has really, um, so I'm something I learned from your writing is that um, it doesn't have to be busy. It doesn't have to be big. It can be very simple. It can be even one instrument that plays a beautiful theme that transitions from one to the next and uh, and accomplishes what it needs more than a full orchestra. Um, and so it's just amazing um, seeing w how you pick and choose what you're going to do according to the setting um, and how it just acts actually serves the story, like you said. Um, but the way so you know, as a new writer, when I was first working with an orchestrator, um, I had so many ideas and I sent him this full orchestral score with just tons and tons of ideas. <laughs> and one of the things that I learned through that process was he, he helped me filter all of my ideas and get to the essence of what needed to be there. And um, I think that's what you're, you've done is, is a masterful job of, of doing that, giving us the essence of the emotion in the situation and then allowing us to feel it at the right tempo in the right way along with the actor. So um, yeah, I've just really, really um, learned a lot and enjoyed this conversation. No, I was thinking about um, going forward. So we have, you know, nine seasons ready to you know ready to go and we're almost done we're hoping for <laughs> season 10 so is there anything that you have not um had the opportunity to tackle uh john serrata um for musically uh in these last nine nine years and you maybe think that you're like oh i want to do this going forward anything like that uh, I'll, I'll, I'll once again i'll i'll defer to to John Tinker, I'm, I, I see myself as, as in support of a grander scheme. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so blessed to, to be able to, 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 to enter the process 
where there is a vision mm -hmm. there's already there's already something in place and 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 that's my job that's that's what that's you know i'm a professional i'm a professional support person <laughs> um, yeah, but and, folks, and, i mean maybe folks do just don't realize what what people like Christy and you do. That's just I, I, I don't get it, which is why in part it's so much fun when those shows come back and they're scored. Mm -hmm. um, it's so fun to to to. It's just, you know, I, I can be really jaded when it comes to actors and other people. Musicians always do it for me, though. I just, it's one of the for me purest forms of art, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I just am in awe of people like you too. So. Thank you for what you're doing, because I always believe you make the world a better place. <laughs> oh, absolutely. absolutely. Holy cow. Wow. wow. <laughs> Unless you're writing something really sad, in which case. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, a good cry you know, is a good cry, right? Let's, let's, not, let's not forget. It starts with the story. It starts yes. with, you know, it in my, my job, vision being cast. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, let's, let's, you know, let's, let's just agree that um, there's a lot of people involved. It, it starts with John Tinker and um, he has to orchestrate, uh, you know, all kinds of, you know, it's, it's like uh, Inspector Clouseau says, <laughs> you know, there are sinister forces at work always trying to um you know uh, i'm and i won't i won't say what but you can you know in in television there are many and john has mm -hmm. to <clears throat> hold his ground when necessary um compromise when necessary and still deliver something that's relatable to the audience because mm -hmm. that you know that's that's the whole game right, <laughs> it's, right. it's like nothing else matters so writing that story with all of the logistics that he's having to deal with at the same time and, and making sure that that is going to work <laughs> for everyone involved has got to be a challenge uh, and then bring the whole team together. But I tell you, and I'm, I'm sure the other Hardys would um, echo this, when you visit the set, the feeling on set and with the whole crew and the team is just so positive. It, I mean, and that's really a culture that it takes an effort to, to create. Um, and I'm sure that comes from the top, but um, I know you guys are a huge part of it. And um, so, yeah, I mean, visiting the set and that's what we've missed. You know, we've really missed uh, that family reunion and, and all those special things yeah, that yeah. everyone works so hard for. And I hope that comes back. I, I need to acknowledge folks like Vicki Southern and mm -hmm. um, those folks who've who have Mike Magnuson and Greg Malcolm, and they've put together a crew of individuals who, who in their own right, like John Sarita, know what they're doing, care about what they're doing, and care about this show. They're really yeah. quite a wonderful group of people. Yeah. yeah, it's so unique to find. You know, I would be remiss if I didn't invite you guys uh, to come see the musical. Um, and I know it's in the middle of nowhere in Napanee, Indiana. What, but... Remind me, where is it? I would love to. Where is it? <laughs> so it's in northern Indiana, um, in, in the middle of Indiana. I guess it's like an hour south of the Michigan border. So um, it's an Amish country, which is really rural and beautiful. And it's set in this old 100 year old, actually, more than a hundred year old round barn um that's been made into a theater janet oak is planning on coming this year she's wow. she's hoping to come and be there for um the hardy's weekend that we're having we treat them as vips when they come and oh. so we have a really a lot of fun with the hardy's so we're uh excited with the possibility her two sons actually live in this area they live about 30 40 minutes from the round barn and so i think they're going to have a little family reunion as well um so we're talking about from the here. top down Jeanette Oak has, has set the tone, oh, yeah. not only with what she's written, but she's just a terrific person. Really, mm -hmm. I, I would love to meet her in person. I have not. We've only spoken by phone. No, oh, she's just, she's wonderful. I met her one time and she is just such a calming, uh, yeah. steady, 
kind person. Um, and it's amazing all the imaginative characters that she's come up with over the years uh, with her books. But yeah, she's just really a blessing. And none, we, none of us would be here without her. So I'm just so thankful yeah. for her. <laughs> well, I'll just I'll just say uh, we you know I've I've been at the Hardy when the Hardy's uh, family reunions used to happen I've been on a couple of panels, and just to to further comment about about her is 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 we were on a panel and there were ten of us and we all had you know thirty seconds to say what we had to say, and um, you know in all the milling around and in all the um, uh, sort of you know, you're, you're getting off the stage and there's a hundred things to do and somebody wants you to come here and somebody wants you to come here. She took me aside to, you know, offer some encouragement and oh, wow. just, just it, great. It, it was, it was a great moment because it's a great talent that some people have. They, they, they can stop the world mm. around you and engage with you. And it's like everything else disappears. And yes. you know that there's, you know, a hundred things, a hundred you know, sinister forces pulling her in various directions. So I, I just, I simply concur with what's been said, and, and yeah, it, it, it makes sense that something like this would, would, would grow from that, mm -hmm. um, from that source. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. she's so special. And you know what, Christy, your musical is special. I was able to be in Indiana for um, the premiere last year. Oh, uh, awesome. And so yeah. with the VIP uh, weekend, hopefully you'll have a lot of uh, Hardys there as well. What is the the um, the date for the VIP? Yes, it's June 24th and 25th. And uh, we're planning some special stuff again this time. Uh, we're going to do some some different food and different things like that. But we all have a whole new cast, pretty much. Um, we only have two returning members from the last cast, but I've rewritten the song and added some things. Uh, so it's going to be different. I mean, it'll be the same story and, and, and mostly the same, but we're, we have two choreographers this time. And so they're really going for it. They're going to take it to the next level. So there's going to be some, some surprises, special effects and things like that that are going to be oh, in it. So I love it. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah we're excited. Amazing. So yeah, we're hoping that there's a lot of Hardys that come and uh, we have a good amount that are coming now, but we'll see. I think we're, we're hearing more and more of people trying to make travel plans. I mean, they just weren't sure for a while. So, but yeah, so it's June 24th, 25th, and we're having all kinds of activities. You've got a restaurant and um, we're actually opening up a pretzel shop and an antique ah. shop and things like that. So there's going to be new things to do on property. Yeah, so, so. great. To be um, a fun time. Just about uh, two and a half hours from Chicago. So it's, you know, if you could go to Chicago, you can drive if you want that. Um, yeah. Uh, and Patty and Brian are planning to be there. And yeah. uh, so are Michelle and Paul Cox. And um, also, I heard that Elliot Wallach and his wife are coming, I believe. Oh, so. nice. oh that's great. Yeah. yeah. We're excited. Yeah, you'll enjoy that. I mean, all Hardys will need to see it. It's really good. It's oh, so thank great. you. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you so much, Christy, for helping us for that. This has been just a joy for this yeah. chat. Um, so, uh, and John, thank you. No, oh, John Tinker, John Sereda, thank you so much for your time and, and graciousness to kind of delve into some of those things. And then you know what, um, the HFR, John Sereda, yes, it's only like three, 30 seconds to have two or three questions that's the reason why we are really enjoying this heart to heart mm -hmm. because we have the opportunity to talk with, you know, our set decorator and our um, product production designers and the people that drive the cars. And we've been like maybe 40 minutes of great, great um, information. So I'm so glad that we had that time for you uh, to kind of explore your, your world. Well, thank it, you it, so much. Well, thank you. I mean, I think that uh, I mean, Christy used a great word: the culture of this show and the culture of of you know working on something like this. And and for me, this is this is the this is the feedback loop. And mm -hmm. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to do this. And God knows, you know, life is full, mm -hmm. um, but here we are. So. Could you score this interview, please, by the way? <laughs> yeah, with a slide whistle. Exactly, exactly. 
and and bagpipes, right? <laughs> oh yes, both. Exactly. Funny. Well, um, thank you so much. Thank I mean, you, Christy. Just, thank you, John. Just thank you guys. So, Hardies, what a great conversation. Thank you so much, Christy, John, and John for joining us and having such a great conversation about the music for When Calls the Heart. Tune in, Hallmark Channel, 8, 7 Central on Sundays. Join us in the Twitterverse using hashtag Hardies, and we will see you then. Mm -hmm.